Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman with Adapt Your Life, and I'm here with Dr. Christy Kessler-Ring. We had a, an amazing day so far at Adapt Chicago, and I wonder if you could summarize what you talked about today. It was great. Thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to educate patients anytime I get the chance. Um, I gave a nice talk, I believe, on That's cancer great. Uh, and how glucose and insulin actually impact cancer incidence, recurrence, overall outcomes. And I just think that there's a growing body of literature which suggests that our metabolic health, how we process foods, the foods that we eat and what they do to our glucose and insulin actually matter. And so many times patients talk to their cancer providers and the providers say, what you eat doesn't matter, we don't want you to lose weight, you know, drink Ensure, um, and do all these things, which seems to be counterintuitive to what we really want to be happening at a metabolic level. And I just hope that by continuing to beat the drum and explain it to patients and hopefully other providers start seeing this, that they understand that that really matters in a patient's outcome. I think it was um, dramatic over and over and over the studies that you showed on how insulin levels, the higher they are, the more correlated with cancer they are or the more correlated with later stages of cancer. I actually, I didn't know it was so solid in the literature, but yeah, it really is. it's really is. dramatic. So why haven't the, uh, well, I guess if the insulin levels are high, that's not good correlation with cancer. Um, why haven't the oncologists figured out that one of the ways to lower insulin is to lower the food that causes insulin, yeah. to lower carbs. Yeah, right? Why, why haven't why the, they, they figured, figured that out. out yet? Well, I think that the main reason is because they're not even aware of that literature, that okay. that's not in their day-to-day -day field, right? They're, they're more worried about what chemotherapy, what regimen of radiation therapy, how do we optimize what we do from a technical standpoint, just mm -hmm. like conventional medical doctors put a pill on it, right? We're just putting radiation or surgery or chemo on it, not understanding that it's a true metabolic disease and we need to address the root cause in addition to the disease. Well, I guess that kind of makes sense if you're a diabetologist who knows that eating carbs will raise the blood sugar, you don't know all about chemotherapy. Exactly. If you're a chemotherapist, you know, you, right, <laughs> you're exactly. not going to, but weren't we taught this in, in school? No, uh, not not really. Really, the, you know, that that eating I, sugar raised the blood sugar. Well, and yes, raised certainly the insulin that. But right, but we didn't associate that with cancer, and I think that was something that even though maybe it was known way back when, then the genetic theory of cancer came out, and we kind of put all of our eggs in the basket of it's a genetic thing. It's right. it's really about you know the oncogenes that are turned on and the tumor suppressor genes that are turned off. But guess what? That's also done and driven by these glucose and by diet. diet. Yeah, yeah, so we need to get back to these epigenetics. As I tell patients, you, genetics may load your gun, but it's those diet and lifestyle factors really that are pulling the trigger. Yeah, so the high insulin levels correlate with, I'm glad, to, it seems like it's just starting to be turned around to say, what if we put people on lower carb diets what right. would happen yeah. uh, it's been a while and um, it and it's not the same to say that you have a high correlation of insulin therefore doing low carb or keto will always work exactly. I mean, there's always a chance that keto is going to do something else that's yeah. not predicted so absolutely you have to i think you studies. certainly have to do the studies and, yeah. and there are places out there that are doing them but as you know doing diet trials there's not a drug company's pocket to support those. So it is harder to get those going. In addition, it's not just a drug where somebody walks into your office, you give them a drug and they walk out. It's a 24-7 lifestyle that you're trying to get them to abide to. So I do think that doing those trials are important, but they're very hard and expensive and we don't have the same type of resources. So it's going to take us a lot more time. And I, I think that there, the body of evidence, if you use Bradford Hill criteria as to the uh, amount of how it how it predicts you know like the 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 degree of difference the incidence the degree of disease uh the outcomes it's really supported already 
And um, what, again, what, what I tell patients usually is that, hey, high insulin levels are associated with worse outcomes. I do not have a trial that says if you lower your insulin, you will lower your, out, you know, lower your risk right. of recurrence. But that yet, still needs to be done. I, that still needs to be done, but we certainly have evidence that following a ketogenic diet lowers insulin the most, that you know, the high intensity interval training lowers insulin more, that all of these factors will lower insulin. And if it's good for metabolic disease, if it's good for diabetics, if it's good, why wouldn't it be good for another metabolic disease like cancer? Yeah. Well, maybe the, um, when there's a lack of funding because there's no drug, often the um, organizations can fund studies. They're not pharma, not drug driven. Is there any glimmer that, for example, the American Cancer Society is interested in studying diet and keto or, or the NIH. Uh, I, I've been really disappointed that yeah. the NIH hasn't funded anything really no, in the keto. I will say that I believe that I just saw uh, an article that a fellow, and I'm going to get it wrong, she's out of one of the major academic institutions, cancer institutions, and she did just get a $50,000 grant from the NIH to study ketogenic diet in a particular drug, and I want to say it's for it's a gynecologic a malignancy. Yeah, it's a start. I mean, so the classic R O one is five yeah. million, but fifty thousand. Fifty thousand, and and, and again, uh, Ohio State is doing a trial right wow. now, and they're oh, they're good. providing the food. So they're t they're looking at uh, stage four breast cancer patients. Half of the patients on the ketogenic diet, half the patients on the American Cancer Society diet, and they're providing all the food for all the patients. So Jeff Volek so and Jeff his group, and his group are doing that, yeah. yeah. Well, they're, great. The, they're the leaders. They're the best. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. If there's one take home point for the general person from your talk, what would you, what would you say? I would say know what your numbers are. Know what your fasting glucose is. Know what your fasting insulin, insulin. level is because insulin is really the thing that's going to become abnormal first. Um, and if it's higher than you think it should be based on my talk or, or, or based on the, what you're hearing from other speakers, um, there are ways to lower it and, and food is the first thing but there may be other things that will help that uh, fine tuning to get it to where you want it to be. Great, and thanks again for coming out on uh, Adapt Chicago today. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks.